any questions where that came from? We didn't write it out earlier, we just wrote R2 minus R3. But that's all I've done is substitute in R2 and R3. And now I can substitute that expression into here. I get K2 times big K1 to the half order times BR2 to the half order times hydrogen minus K3 times the hydrogen radical times BR2. That's still equal to zero. So now I can rearrange for H dot. Cancel? Yeah, right. You can simplify this a little bit. I don't want you to lose that hydrogen, so I'll just move it over. So looking back, well, we'll finish it off. Now I can write the rate of hydrogen bromide formation. Can I simplify that? Yes. What's K effective? Absolutely right. The two is in the effective rate constant. Okay. Does that tell you anything? If I were to give you that rate equation about what mechanism might be involved, where does that half order come from? It's from the splitting. Yeah. So if you see a half order in a rate equation. And you might be asked to derive a mechanism consistent with that rate equation. You're probably looking, sorry, there should be a two there. But you're probably looking, in this case, for something like this to be involved in the step. Now, whether or not there's two arrows and all that kind of stuff is not always that easy to, to see. But of course, in this case, that is the initiation step that we have. So that half order is a giveaway of something about the mechanism. Other places that you might see it is if I have a reaction of CO plus hydrogen goes to methane plus water, and I'll balance it to show that I have good discipline. Um, the rate of CO consumption can be, at certain conditions, equal to some effective rate constant times hydrogen to the half order divided by CO. 
So what is a step of that reaction? Hydrogen dissociation. In some sense, it's kind of obvious from a chemical perspective, how else am I going to stick the hydrogen atoms on the carbon, if not by dissociating them first? But that is, in fact, a step of this reaction. It doesn't make radicals here, because I do this over a catalyst. So instead, it makes chemisorbed hydrogen atoms, which is just another way of saying that the hydrogen is not a radical, but it is bound to the surface for instance, platinum. Why is my, why is CO in the denominator? Did I make a mistake? Hmm? Why is it inhibiting the rate? Any guesses? Because it absorbs so strongly to the metal surface, it prevents the hydrogen from dissociating on it. Prevents the hydrogen from even getting there. It's simply covering the surface at such a high amount that it actually speeds up the rate to remove a little bit, which allows the hydrogen to get to the surface and do chemistry. If I have a surface that's covered in uh, CO, I can't react it with hydrogen. If I have a surface that has no CO on it, I also can't react it with hydrogen. So you want there to be some intermediate amount of CO on the surface. If it's covering too much of the surface, it ends up in the denominator of your rate equation. Okay, so again, can we say that CO is an inhibitor? Yeah, absolutely. It is both a reactant and an inhibitor. Yeah. How would a catalyst increase selectivity instead of rate in a situation like that? Selectivity to what? I've only shown you two products, and I can't change the ratio between them. So selectivity to what? Methane. Well, it's going to make methane every time I do the reaction. I can't avoid that. So does that have to be a more complex reaction? Yes. For instance, I can make methane or ethylene. Now I've got a more complex reaction, and there's many arguments about what could control this selectivity. In this case, it would be the rate of two carbon species reacting with each other to form a C2 compared to the rate of, that, of a carbon species reacting with hydrogen to make methane. <coughs> yeah? So if the concentration of hydrogen is dominant, then Say that again? Is dominant, like on the surface, you mean? Yes. Like the surface is covered in hydrogen? Yes, so CO will be... Okay. Yeah, if that were true, the rate equation would look like that. It's still to the half order because what covers the surface isn't hydrogen molecules but hydrogen atoms. So it's still after the split. But it would look like that. You're absolutely right. That just doesn't happen. Very, I don't know of any surfaces that would rather bind hydrogen atoms than CO. I mean, I'm sure there are some, but it's not common. Yes. Yeah. Just to confirm, uh, so because the CO is at the higher power, I mean, if you flip it back, sure. CO is covering more of the surface than hydrogen. It's because it's at a less power. Is that true? It's, it dominates the equation. It's because it's what shows up in the denominator of the equation. What shows up in the denominator of surface reaction equations is what's covering the surface. Because that's the only way that you're inhibited by a reactant, right? Right. Now, you can be inhibited by products, but that's because that reaction might be reversible, right? You might make a little bit of B, but then if you put too much B in, it starts pushing you back. So that just means your overall reaction is approaching equilibrium. But if it's a reactant, normally the way that it would inhibit a reaction is by blocking reactive sites. Yeah. No, nah, you would normally write it that way. Yeah. You would write it as the rate of consumption. You wouldn't normally put the negative sign inside KFA. Okay. We'll bring out just one little quick reaction. As it, as it only, only because it relates to your homework, I'm, I'm not going to spend really any time on it. I can't read that. I'm not gonna go till 2:45. Just asking. <laughs> Everybody's like, I got a date. I'm getting out of here. All right. Wait, I thought we were getting like 15 minutes earlier. We are. What I'm saying. I just wanted to make sure.
I can do the math, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> so that's my overall reaction. What is that, by the way? Huh? Water. I know that's water. What's the reaction? <laughs> what is that? Is that what you're thinking about? Osmosis is hydrogen, water moving through a membrane of a cell. Combustion. Combustion. Often called combustion, right? Here's a mechanism for combustion. I react. A hydrogen radical collides with an oxygen molecule and makes a hydroxyl radical. This isn't hydroxide, that's the anion. A hydroxyl radical and an oxygen radical. In a subsequent reaction, an oxygen radical reacts with a hydrogen molecule and it makes a hydroxyl radical, a hydrogen radical, and then a hydroxyl radical can react with a hydrogen molecule to make water and another hydrogen radical. What do I get if I add these up? No, I don't get the overall equation. Three hydrogens, right? One, two, Three hydrogens. <coughs> Sorry, two hydrogens. Like what? All right. Plus O2, right? Plus hydrogen radical. What does it form? Oh, I know. I know what it is. So it helps things balance two times that when I'm adding them up. So that's why you get three. It'll just, it'll have the hydroxyl radicals cancel out. You don't have to write it in the mechanism, I'm just saying, to add them up, it's easier to multiply that by two. So you get two waters plus three. One, two times that one, hydrogen radical. So I started with a single hydrogen radical, and through these steps, I end up with three of them. What does that lead to? It's a, it's, it's a chain reaction on overkill. That's what leads to explosions. Rapid release of pressure, because those radicals are in the gas phase. So I'm making more gas phase molecules than I'm consuming. Boom. Yes? Yeah, you'll make some hydrogen peroxide, but hydrogen peroxide is also really unstable, so it's not that hard for it to go. And then through, so that, I mean, that's one of the reasons why hydrogen peroxide itself is unstable, is it can decompose into radicals which recreate oxygen and hydrogen. But no, I mean, this is what can lead to explosions, right? This is what happens during combustion that can lead to Nastiness. All right. So, so the elementary steps don't need to add up to the overall reaction. So. They do. This isn't the complete list of elementary steps. Oh. There's other steps that happen. Oh, okay. But the point is that these three steps lead to an increase in the number of radicals in the system, which then increases, which then increases, right? So it's a chain reaction on overkill, right? The propagation step isn't just preserving the number of radicals, it's increasing the number of radicals. All right, the next thing we're going to talk about is just another example, more homework help. And we'll look at acetaldehyde pyrolysis. And again, this reaction is used in one of the homework problems. I make no guarantees, however, 
that what I'm putting on the board is the exact same as the Homer problem. Okay? Just like the last one had a different reverse, you know, it had an additional reversible step. This mechanism might also be written differently and therefore lead to a completely different answer. There's not that many reactions that are catalyzed, so a lot of the examples get recycled. Okay, so acid aldehyde decomposes into a methyl radical, and this is called a formal radical, F-O-R-M-Y-L. That's where formaldehyde gets its name. Well, I should say the radical gets its name from formaldehyde. One of those methyl radicals reacts with acetaldehyde. I get another methyl radical, carbon monoxide and methane. The formal radical reacts with acetaldehyde. Methyl radical, now two carbon monoxides and hydrogen. And finally, two methyl radicals react with each other to form ethane. What is my initiation step? First one, yeah. That wasn't a hard question. Yeah, I make two radicals. What's my propagation step? Second and third, what's my termination step? Fourth. So as I've written it, you know, notice I haven't written any of these as reversible. Again, that doesn't mean your homework does you the same favor. Generally speaking, the homework will be harder than what I do on the board, but in an ideal world, a little easier than what you'll see on the exam. Wait, so the homework will be easier or the exam will be easier? The homework will be harder than the exam. Uh, Isn't that not what I said? No. It'll be harder than what you saw. Oh. <laughs> Man, you guys are sweating. Yeah, the exam should be somewhere in between the lecture material and the homework. I can't make the lecture material that hard or it'll just right over your head. All right. Any guesses what AC is here? Acid aldehyde. You'll see that a lot. Don't let it throw you off. It's, it's not actinium, which I think is AC. It's just, yeah. Okay, so the rate of consumption, R1, right? Plus what? R2. R2. Plus R3. Acid aldehyde. AC, acid aldehyde. I'm just not putting CH3CHO 1800 times. K1 times the concentration of acid aldehyde, so there it is again. Plus what? Times what? Keep going. Plus 